word, yes, Lord. Lord. Let yes, somebody Lord. be encouraged tonight, Lord. Oh, God, and if somebody be healed tonight, God, let them give their testimony, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. And we're just praising you and we give you all the glory and the honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, God, just praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. Nothing is too hard for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing is too hard. Oh, God. Sometimes we don't know where to go or what to do. But we thank you, Jesus, that you already have the answers, God. Touch Rochelle's house in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm going to touch Tamiko's house. Oh, Father God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every household, God. Hallelujah. Let there be something miraculous that happens this week in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Even to our extended family, our children, our aunts and our uncles, God. Thank you, Jesus. It's already done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, to the life. Let's give the Lord a praise on this evening. Come on, let's give him a worthy praise on this evening. Hallelujah. He's a prayer answering God. He's a mighty God. And we bless him tonight. We thank him for his goodness. Good evening to everybody. Good evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Judah Life. On a Thursday night, he's worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord, Judah Life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. Good to see each of you in the house of the Lord on this beautiful Thursday. Man, the weather, the weather has been favorable to us. Amen. The weather has been good. Um, bless it. Like we're having a nice little end of summer, even though we're in fall. Man, these seasons, I was just telling Sister Pastor, this year is going fast. And the weeks, at first it seemed like it was like somewhere in a zone, like a twilight zone. But now... It done picked up momentum, and we almost at the end of the year. Wow, it's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Hope you've been enjoying our series. Are y'all ready for your test tonight? I heard no already. <laughs> it won't be tonight, but maybe next week. We will see. Amen. Amen. Daryl Lynn, could you do Pastor a favor? Get me that bottle of water right there. So good to see you, uh, everyone. Thank God for his keeping grace. His saving grace, His faithfulness unto us. Nobody like Jesus. If you would, those that are streaming, we want to welcome you to our Growing in Faith Today class. Growing in Faith gift class. Amen. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. So we're here tonight to grow in our faith. Amen. As we continue in our series, Sheep versus Goats. I don't know about you, but I have been enjoying this series. I have, I have really been enjoying this series, and God is speaking to us in this series, um, learning more about sheep and goat than I've ever learned in my life, amen, and, and even the shepherd, learning about the shepherd, we'll do more uh, talk about the shepherd here as we get to the end of the lesson, I think we may have two more uh, nights tonight and next Thursday may be uh, next Thursday may end this series. I'm not sure yet. We will see what the Lord has to say. But tonight and next Thursday may be the end of this series. Um, so we're excited about that. Uh, if you would, turn in your Bibles with me. Um, let's go to uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, our main focus scripture for this lesson. And we've been reading from John chapter 10. If you, those that are streaming with us tonight, if you would, if you would just share this, share this video, start a watch party. Uh, those that are streaming and that you're blessed, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Amen, somebody. And even in the sanctuary, those of you that can connect uh, uh, through a watch, start a watch party here in the sanctuary, maybe you can tag a family member or a friend, neighbor, co-worker, somebody that you know that needs a word from the Lord. Amen. 
There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, St. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. Begin at verse 7. We'll read verse 7 through 11. Then we'll jump down and read verses 25 through 30. 7 through 11, St. John. Who all has the Bible? Raise your Bibles high so I can see them. Raise them, raise them, raise them. I see you, Jojo. I see them. Raise them high, raise them high. Raise them high. Good. Look like everybody, everybody got a Bible. Praise the Lord. St. John, chapter 10, verse 7. Let's read in unison as a church family. Then said Jesus unto them. Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that I might have life, and that I might have it more abundantly. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. All right, verse 25, everybody. We'll read verse 14. Read verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Now verse 25 through 30. Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them what? Eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Now that sounds contradictory, doesn't it? Because he says in the previous verse that no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. Then he says in verse 28, no man can pluck, or uh, verse 29, he says, my father, which is greater than all, no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. But then he clarifies it in verse 30. What does he say? I, I and my father are one. are one. Let me start off tonight by saying um, uh, to refute all of these false doctrines Jesus is the only way to be saved Amen. Amen. Jesus now understand and I hear a lot of people say I even had a cousin um, that was I was communicating with maybe a month and a half ago and he was a believer at first and believed in Jesus now he said that ain't even his name and I, I was thinking he he didn't got and then he as he continued to talk this cousin began to tell me uh, basically that he was in the black Israelites that we're of one of the lost tribes now let me say let me say this I I'm not getting into all that that that's really not important what is important is if I'm in Christ and I get through the right door now uh, if you're a black Israelite and you're watching me tonight and you say uh, his name is Yeshua you get no argument out of me that Jesus' name in Greek is Yeshua. You get no argument out of me. But the, 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 here's my contention with you. I was not raised in Greece. <laughs> I was raised in America. And thank God that they are able to take scriptures and put them into our languages so we can understand them based on our language. Yeah. I wasn't raised in, 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 in the Israel where they speak the Hebrew language. I wasn't raised in Greece where they speak Greek. I wasn't raised in the land. So I speak English. So we say Jesus Christ. You say Yeshua. But please don't insult me and say Jesus ain't his name. Because I'll tell you all day Jesus is his name. Amen. Yeshua is his name. 
We don't have no argument, but don't don't come at me like that. I'm telling you right now. Y'all got to be careful. I'm saying this because there's many false doctrines coming along. And they're praying, watch this, they're praying on the weaknesses of people now. They're praying on the law because of people's loss of identity. We're teaching on identity in Christ on Sundays, right? So they're praying on the identity of the believers and especially dark-skinned people. And they're telling you that this white Jesus ain't no such I'm not, I'm not getting into what color he was. That wasn't, can I tell you something? That wasn't Jesus' battle, what color he was. That wasn't Jesus' message. Jesus' message was this. For God so loved the world that he gave his what? Only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Here is Jesus' message. Repent for the kingdom of God is here. That's the message of the church. Not what color you are. Not from what tribe. You come from, we don't, many of us are mixed up. We don't know where we come from. And that's not the important thing is, I got to make sure I'm going through the right door. You got to make sure you're going through the right door. Jesus is that door. Jesus is God. And beside him, there is no other. He says, me, I and my father are one. He talks about the sheep coming through. I looked up the word sheep. Just to see how many times that word or a semblance of that word um, was mentioned in the Bible. In the whole scripture, it's mentioned 189 times. 189 times. 148 in the Old Testament and 41 times is the word sheep or a resemblance of that word mentioned in the New Testament. Uh, um, watch this. Most of us, watch this, are sheep. But have goat tendencies. I've already went through that, right? Uh, but sheep have a remarkable instinct of hearing their shepherd's voice. Jesus explained that uh, because he understood those that would follow him are sensitive to his voice. Amen. And another they will not follow. All right? Are you with me? We talked about uh, the, the, the distinction of where they will be separated. Watch this. Sheep will be on what side, everybody? The right side. The goats will be on what side, everybody? Amen. The left side. The right side represents, remember this, a place of honor. Just kind of kind of going over before I get deep. The goat on the left side represents a place of what? Rejection. Everybody say rejection. rejection. Uh, watch this. I said this, and I'm going to continue to say it. God never intended for sheep to follow sheep. Mm -hmm. They are to follow the shepherd. All right? Uh, let's get back into the lesson. Let's... Let's kind of go through the different characteristics of the sheep as we get ready to end this section of the lesson. The characteristics of the sheep. What's number one, everybody? No sense of direction. They have no sense of direction. Make sure that's in your note. They have no sense of direction. Number two, what is it? Sheep are defenseless. They cannot defend themselves. They cannot, even uh, with the little things that they can do, uh, they don't do them very well. So sheep are defensive. They need a shepherd to protect them. Number three, what is it? Sheep can't get up without help. Uh, sheep cannot get up without help. All right? Uh, and you all know that. Number four, what, what is number four? They are emotional and recognize the shepherd's voice. They recognize the shepherd's voice. Number five. I love this one. Sheep are not meant to carry burden. If you've been carrying burdens after this lesson, it's your fault. Okay, let me say that again. If you've been dealing with the stress of life, uh, and I'm not saying that they won't quite affect us at times, but if you've been letting the burdens and the cares of life weigh on you, you're not doing what you can as a sheep to handle those things. Because sheep don't carry burdens. They understand that the shepherd carries the burdens. Are you with me? Number six. Sheep will what? They will settle for less. Number seven. Sheep are valuable. Somebody say, I am valuable. Somebody say, I am valuable. They are priceless. Number eight. 
Sheep cannot care for themselves when wounded. Sheep cannot. Can you imagine a, a, a sheep leaving the herd or leaving uh, the sheepfold and being on their own? They go astray and get wounded. What's going to happen to that sheep if that sheep ain't found? That sheep is going to die because sheep cannot care for themselves when they are wounded. Number nine, here it is. Here's the new one. Y'all ready? Sheep are innocent. Sheep are innocent. In the Bible, sheep represent purity and innocence. Watch this. It was the lamb that was sacrificed at Passover because it represented what? The lamb of God in the Old Testament. When, when, when they had to sacrifice the lamb, that lamb represented the lamb of God, which was Jesus. And that lamb had to be flawless. The lamb had to be pure. And the lamb had to be holy. Let me say that again. The lamb had to be flawless, pure, and holy. It wasn't a goat or any other animal. Interestingly, goats are known for being, once again, independent, opinionated, and curious at best. Watch this. Or vulgar, dangerous, and destructive at worst. Let me say that again just in case you didn't get that. Goats are known to be independent, opinionated, and curious at their best. Uh, at their worst, they are vulgar, goats are dangerous, and goats are destructive. If you know anything, watch this. If, if, if the Bible signifies that sheep... Uh, 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 and that we represent sheep. Uh, uh, it's no, how would I say that? It's no, uh, um, uh, it doesn't, you don't need a, a degree to understand why. Watch this. Satanism uses the goat as their emblem. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say that again. Satan is, Satanism uses in their emblems. If you Google Satanism and some of their some of their emblems, the goat is on their emblems. Mm -hmm. The opposite of what God says, we are sheep, goats. Remember, goats are going to be where? On the right side. The sheep are going to be on the right side. I mean, the go yeah. sheep are going to be on the right. right thank you. Okay. Good. I, I, hey, I love it. And the, <laughs> the goats are going to be where? On the left. On the left. Thank you for correcting me. Watch this. No wonder they're going to be on the left because Satan is using the goats. Remember, they're independent. Uh, they're destructive. Uh, they're vulgar. Uh, they're opinionated. And curious. You, can I say something? When the shepherd leads the sheep, the sheep never tell the shepherd where to go. Okay, I want to try to catch that. The sheep never give directive to the shepherd. Uh, they obey the shepherd. They follow the shepherd. Now, every now and then, some will go astray. But for the most part, sheep are being led. And they don't, in this, God help me tonight, in this new modern church, these folks are telling God what to do now. they telling God how to define his word. They're now trying to uh, say what is sin and what is not. They're trying to dictate to, dictate to the church that what we believe is wrong now. Yep. Oh, y'all come on, talk to me. They try to tell us that 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 sin is no longer wrong, and if you speak against it, you you you're speaking hate. Yep. I'm not speaking hate when I speak against sin. I'm just doing what the Word of God said. Now I don't hate the sinner, and God doesn't hate the sinner, but He does hate the sin, yeah. and the church should be vocal about speaking up against sin because. We are doing what God told us to do. Amen. Goats are trying to run things. They're opinionated. Can I say this? I've said this before. It's been years. But in the kingdom, when I talked about the kingdom a few years back, in the kingdom, you don't have a vote. Come on. In the kingdom, you don't have an opinion. Goats vote. Goats have opinions. Goats are stubborn. Goats are hard-headed. That's why the Bible says we're to be the opposite as sheep. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So the Bible says sheep are innocent, uh, flawless, pure, and holy. Uh, uh, we are to be as innocent as lambs. 
Watch this. Pure and righteous. What are we supposed to be? Pure and righteous. Not go to our independent, strong-willed, and destructive. I'm going to go through a few scriptures on sheep. Um, um, Genesis 4.2. Genesis 4.2. Listen to this scripture. This, this really stood out to me when I was studying today. Genesis 4.2. And she began to bear his brother Abel. Uh, and Abel was what? A keeper of the sheep. But notice the language. This is so interesting. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. I want y'all to catch that. Coincide that with what I preached on Sunday. Uh, that we were formed from what? Dust. The dust of the ground. So here Abel was tending to the sheep. But Cain was dealing with the ground. Mm -hmm. That's why when it came down to it, Cain couldn't offer God a sacrifice that was pleasing because he was dealing with the dirt. Mm. <laughs> okay. He he was dealing, he was he was tilling the ground. He was he was dealing with fleshly things. Anytime you deal with fleshly things, you can't please God. Mm. Yeah. I'm gonna say it again. In your flesh and in my flesh, we can never please God. I'm going to say it one more time. In our flesh, in our own opinion, I, I just want to say what I want to say. This is my opinion. If it don't match up with the word, your opinion doesn't mean a thing. Come on, amen. amen. Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Psalm 79, 13. 79, 13. So we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. We, thy people, and sheep of thy patch will give thanks. Sheep are thankful. Let me say it again. Sheep are thankful. Let me say it one more time. Sheep are grateful and thankful. Amen. Psalm 95 to 7. For he is our God. Just want to give you a few scriptures on sheep. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, y'all know the rest, harden not your heart. Uh, Psalms 103. Know ye not, or know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are what? His people, and the sheep of, over and over again, he calls us his sheep. The sheep of his pasture. Isaiah 53 and 6. Are we like sheep? Here's, here's where you see where sheep go astray. Have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Here it is. Here it is. Sheep follow the shepherd. But you got to admit, every now and then, we go astray. Amen. We go astray. Uh, uh. Uh, and I'll get more into that as we go a little deeper. Isaiah 53 and 7. Isaiah 53 and 7 says he was oppressed. Talking about Jesus. This is the pref, uh, prophetic messianic uh, prophecy of Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he, what? Open not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his sharers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. And that's the Old Testament. It's just a few scriptures from the Old Testament. Now go to the New Testament, Mark or Matthew 7.15. Matthew 7.15. It says, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly are, they are ravening what? Wolves. Got to be careful. Everybody that says they're a man or woman of God is not necessarily a man or woman of God. Amen. There, I, I, I would tend to say there are more wolves than there are sheep. Come on. <laughs> uh, uh, there are more wolves. Sheep, well, watch this. Wolves devour sheep. Mm -hmm. Shepherds take care of the sheep. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Matthew 10 and 6. Behold, I send you. Now listen to this. I want y'all to hear this very closely. 
Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Isn't that interesting? He equates us to sheep, but then he says be wise as serpents. He didn't tell you to be a serpent. I want that to sink in for a moment. He didn't tell you to be a serpent. Amen. God told me to be wise as a serpent. He didn't tell you to be one, though. If he didn't want you to be a serpent, he just, see, see, can I say something? The Bible says the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Why would the Bible say that? Why are the, why are the children of darkness wiser? Because the children of light don't take advantage of everything that they have. Okay? Uh, uh, the world, can I tell you this? In the world system, they're wise enough to take, how do I say it? They're wise enough to take the advantages and the benefits of their system. It, it, that makes sense what I just said. Uh, 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 people were talking about President Trump and his taxes. He didn't break any laws. He just used the system that they put in place because the wisdom. Now, if they put a system in place for me to save money, you don't think I'm going to do it? Wouldn't, okay, wouldn't you do it? The children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. So, so, so the, this takes me back again to Sunday's message. What was Sunday's message, Pastor? Y'all remember uh, the, the creator made us and any time a person uh, a creator creates something, he, he, he has a manual with it. They have a manual to go with their product. We have the manual, but we ain't wise enough to follow it. The world follows their system to a T. The church has the greatest manual that, that anybody can be afforded, and we don't even use it. Trouble hits us, we don't go to the manual. We start crying boo-hoo. Come on, y'all, talk to pastor tonight. We got everything that pertains to life and godliness is in the word, but we don't take advantage of it. Watch this. Something happens to us. Instead of speaking life, we speak death. Come on. That means we're not taking advantage of the manual. We're not using the wisdom of the word. to God, everything we need is in the word of God. Would y'all agree with me? Amen. So what need have us or you to fret? Are you with me? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are of ravening wolves. Matthew 9 36. Matthew 9 36. But when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd a good shepherd's going to look at sheep and move, be moved with compassion because they know the state of danger that sheep are in when they don't have a shepherd the yardage discuss i want let me how can i rephrase that to make sense any people that don't have a shepherd they're in a dangerous place sheep must everybody say must Sheep must have a shepherd. So when Jesus was moved with compassion, it was because they didn't have, it was like he saw, he saw these people without somebody to lead them. He saw these people without somebody to feed them. And he saw these people without somebody to protect them. Because that's what a shepherd does. Leads, feeds, protects. Right? So here's a people that don't have somebody to lead them, somebody to feed them, and somebody to protect them. Because sheep can't feed themselves, sheep can't lead themselves, and sheep can't protect themselves. Are y'all with me? All right. Um, Hebrews 13, 20. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant through the blood of the everlasting covenant this verse is where the lamb is likened to a sheep that's why i said we're in good company when you start talking about sheep and, and, and jesus is equated to as a sheep we're in good company uh 
Uh, Acts 8.32, the place of the scripture where we read that he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb <laughs> before his shearer. So he opened it, not his mouth. Let's read this scripture. Romans 8. Go with me to Romans 8. Romans 8, 35 to 37. I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. Romans 8, 35 through 37. All right, let's read. Romans 8, 35. Very familiar scripture. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, come on, read, or persecution, or, 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 as for thy sake, we are, we are what? Wait, 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 we are what all the day long? Killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Sheep are always in one sense in danger. We are counted. Uh, we are killed all the lame. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. First Peter 2.25 where you were as sheep going astray but are now turned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. I love that. First Peter 2.25. Uh, you are now returned. When a sheep goes astray, it is important to know that we have a shepherd and a person that is a bishop over our souls. What is that word bishop? It just means an overseer. Uh, he's an overseer, a pastor. Uh, same as shepherd, very similar in its meaning. A shepherd and bishop. Thank God we got a bishop of our soul. Amen. Uh, uh, go with me to Psalms 23. Everybody's familiar with that. Everybody's familiar with Psalms 23. I think we quoted it last Thursday. Psalms 23. <laughs> Psalms 23. Everybody have it? Let's read. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for what? For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love this psalm, but let's, let's just dissect it for a moment. Let's just, the Lord is my shepherd. Does anybody remember when we talked about on Sunday? Uh, when we talked about the Lord God form, we took out and we extracted the word Lord, took it from the Hebrew. Does anybody remember what word that was in the Hebrew? Uh-oh. Jehovah? Jehovah. 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 Yes, Jehovah. So basically here David is saying Jehovah is my, he, he had to make that plain because uh, shepherds were many because uh, the, the, the flocks were many. Are y'all with me? So he was being distinctive when he was saying, the Lord, Jehovah, is my shepherd. The self-existing one. Uh, the one that doesn't have a beginning or an end. The one that does not have a father or a mother. The one that does not have a counselor. 
He reasons and counsels within himself. The Lord is my, and if the Lord is our shepherd, that means he leads, he feeds, and he protects us. Then we can conclude that we shall not want anything that is really necessary and good for us. Do you realize if you declare that the Lord is your shepherd, you shouldn't ever have need for anything that you really need. Come on. You may not have everything that you desire, but all of your needs will be met if the Lord is your shepherd. Because I, I like that because he used the word Lord, Jehovah, Jehovah. One of the one of the key words for Jehovah is Jehovah Jireh. And David penned this and said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, he said, Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord God, my provider. In other words, I shall not want or lack anything because he's everything that I need. So not only shall I not want, I shall, watch this, I shall be supplied with whatever I need. And if, if I have not everything that I desire, watch this. I can conclude that it is not good for me or I am not ready to receive it. And if it's not the time, I shall have it in due season. In other words, there's some things uh, God may have promised you, but it may not be the season for you to attain it. And then there's something that God doesn't desire for your life. And he knows better than you that you don't need it. Come on, come on. There's some relationships God done messed up that you tried to do. Because you were in your, you were in your uh, dust. <laughs> you were in your dust season. You trying to, uh, stir, what they say, stir up some dust. And, and, and somehow the Lord blocked it. And, 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 and it took you a moment to recognize, man, I thank God that he blocked that. Because if he didn't block that, I would have got down the line. Look at that crazy fool that I would have been attached to. Uh, come on. God, God knows. Y'all remember the soul? Oh, those of us that are old enough to remember the good old shows. This is one of those old time shows. Father knows best. How many remember that? How many remember that show you used to come on? You're telling your age tonight because that came on many moons ago. Father knew best. And, and what happened is the children would find out through their foolishness and folly and their childishness that when it came down to the end of the show that what Father said to them is what was best for them. See, sometimes, see, God is writing all of our stories. God is writing, but the bad thing is, on our party, is we get caught up and we want to stir the dust, we try to, to change and circumvent God, but God is writing our story, and he knows what's best for you. He knows that buster ain't no good for you. Can I, can, can I get a witness? Can I, can I get a show of people that you tried to do something your own and, 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 and God showed you uh, the person before you got too connected and, and showed you, start showing you inkling. See, let me, let me help those that want a date. Let me help those that want a date. You will get little signs that you shouldn't be with that person. You will start, anybody, uh, come on, y'all. I, I didn't, hey, I, I, let me, can I say something? Can I testify about me? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I give you a humbling story about me? Listen, I wish I would have listened to God years ago. Because if you listen to God, it will keep you from years of headache. But when you listen to your flesh, you will have years and decades of misery when you miss God. Amen. Oh, man, I wish somebody would hear pastor tonight. I'm telling you, that's why sheep are supposed to listen to the shepherd. Sheep are supposed to follow the shepherd. But when you go astray, you run the risk of being attacked by wild dogs, wolves, and anything that threatens the sheep. Come on. Are y'all with me? Come on, the me. Lord, Jehovah, the self-existent one, the eternal one, is my shepherd. I shall not want. Some things he don't want for me. Some things aren't good for me. Some things aren't advantageous for me. It may feel good in my dust. Come on. <laughs> but after the smoke clears and the dust settles. Come on. Come on. Come on. I better listen. Listen to me. God knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for the sheep. 
Number one, he provides. The shepherd provides. He provides. He provides. That's what he gives us in verse one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, everything that I need is in my shepherd. He's going to make sure I'm led right. He's going to make. He's going to make sure I don't eat in places that would help, would de destroy me. Filthy, dirty water. Are y'all with me? Then number two, verse two says, "He maketh me to lie down in what green pastures." Can I tell you about the green pastures? They are never dry. Green pastures are never barren. Green pastures are never parched. If God, the shepherd, takes you to a place, it's going to be green and always green and full of life. Are y'all with me? He make it. Now, here's the interesting thing. Sheep are so dumb in one sense that he has to make me do what's best for me. <laughs> okay, let me say that again. He has to, he has to insist that I listen to him and, and, and lay down in green pastures. Because y'all remember, sheep, sheep will, 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 will settle for less. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that, right? Sheep will settle. But he's making me to what? Lie down. Sometimes, Lord, uh, when I want to go astray, thank you for making me lie down when I didn't want to lie down. Mm -hmm. He's making me to lie down. Because that's what a shepherd does. Sheep, sheep don't control nothing. The, the shepherd does. The shepherd is Lord or ruler over the flock. Mm -hmm. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. Number three, he leadeth me where? Beside what? Still waters. Uh, the sheep, the saints are led by streams of living waters. Not to, be, uh, uh, not to the standing waters, which are corrupt and gather filth. You ever watch standing water? It, 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 if, you, if you ever... If you ever just just see a puddle of standing water from rain or whatever, at first it's all right. But after it's there a while, you will see how the debris and the filth gets tangled up in that standing water. Mm -hmm. God will never allow his children to be in standing water. Mm -hmm. He Watch this. He leads me. When I would go astray, he leads me beside the still waters. Uh, not troubled, not the troubled waters, not the troubled sea. He doesn't lead me uh, down a a a a a a one of them things where where they flow, the water flows, and people get in them and and they they go over the cliff and waterfall. Waterfall. He's not leading me down a waterfall. Thank you, Minister God. He's not leading me down a waterfall where I have the threat of death or hurt on my life. He's leading me beside what everybody. The still waters. But the still waters that quench, this is the still waters that quench, watch this, the thirsty soul. Uh, the thirsty soul. That's why the Bible says, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, he shall be filled. I love what Jesus says about, y'all remember when Jesus said, I'm the living water? He's the water. That, and, and when he leads us beside still, he's talking about, I'm leading you. I am the water, and I'm leading you to me. Everything about God is leading us to him. God will never lead his children wrong. He will never lead the sheep into dangerous flowing waters, but he leads us beside still waters. Now think about that word still, meaning quiet. If I say quiet. quiet. In, God, in God, there ain't a bunch of chaotic noise. Ain't a bunch of craziness. Life is full of craziness. Life is full of crisis. Life is full of uh, problems. Can I tell you this? Life is noisy. Remember, goats make a lot of noise. Y'all remember about goats? They real noisy. Y'all remember that attribute about the goats? They're real noisy. But God doesn't want his children to be like goat. He wants us to be quiet. I'll get into that later. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Number four, he restoreth my soul. I love it because it is a restores my flesh. He restores my soul. What is what are, what are we now? A living soul. Sheep will wander and stray away at times to their own detriment. But the good shepherd is faithful to restore, to renew, to revive, to replenish the wandering soul. 
Watch this. No other creature will lose itself sooner than a sheep. And the best saints, watch this. And the best saints understand that our proclivities to go astray at times. In other words, even those that have been saved for a while know that if they're not careful, they have the proclivity to go back to the dust, Amen. to go back to the flesh. That's why the best saints know how to guard themselves against those proclivities. You know what makes you weak. Come on. You know what makes you, you know what rattles your chain. Come on. The best saints know what causes them to go astray. And they do their best not to go there because they know if they go that route, they can end up in a place of misery, a place of condemnation. Y'all, y'all with me? Just stay with me. So he restoreth. I thank God that he maketh me to lie down. He leadeth me beside his still water. And when my soul is jacked up, when I've gone astray from his word, he restoreth my soul. Somebody ought to be grateful that when you messed up, God is in the restoring business. Come on, amen. <laughs> I'm so glad. Anybody glad that God is in the restoring business? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? Maybe you. I've been saved since I was 14. Uh, going on 15, I can tell you right now that I've messed up on my journey. But I'm so glad like David. David messed up plenty of time, didn't he? David messed up. David, y'all know the story of him, Bathsheba. You know the story of how he got caught up into that adulterous affair with another man's wife. Then he not only got up into an affair, got her pregnant. After he got her pregnant, he called for the husband to come home, put him at the front of the battle because he wouldn't sleep with his wife. He tried to cover it up. Sleep with your wife, and he, would, he wouldn't sleep with his wife. David was, can you imagine, David was probably biting his nails. <laughs> I brought him home to sleep with his wife so I could cover it up that I got his wife pregnant. He won't even go to sleep with his wife. Ah, mm. uh, uh, He said, as long as my men are out there, I can't do this. So, so David sent him to the heat of the battle so he could die, and then he died. So not only did David commit adultery, not only did David try to cover it up, not only did David commit murder by murdering the woman, Bathsheba's husband, then David, I love, I love when the prophet came to David. Y'all remember the prophet? I think it was Nathan. The prophet came to David, and, and he described, and I love this, he described the scenario as a little lamb being taken from, from, from his owner. Watch this. Uh, David, after he described the parable of the lamb being taken, David said, who is that that took that little lamb? I'll get him. I'll kill him. And then I like what the prophet said, thou art the man. Can I tell you something? Uh, after all of that, and after all David did, David had this cry, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I don't care what you've done. There's a place of restoration for all of us. And I don't give you a license to go see him. People say, oh, I, if David did all that, and he, the Lord restored him, then I can get away with it. Don't, don't, don't have presumptuous seeing. That's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. You may not be forgiven for person. You may not make it back to repent. Come on. Amen. He restoreth. I love this. He restoreth my soul. When we lose our way, God shows us. The error of our way, just like Nathan showed David, the prophet showed David the error of his way. What did David do? The Bible does let us know that David repent. And watch this. When you repent, the shepherd brings us back into the sheepfold and restores us. Nobody, unless you blaspheme the Lord, nobody is outside of the reach of God's restoration. Let me say this again. Well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. You are not outside of God's reach. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say that again. Maybe somebody's watching me tonight. And you've done some very, very crazy things in your flesh. And you feel like you can't be forgiven. Can I tell you something? God will forgive you. And he will restore you. He's the God of restoration. I said he's the God of restoration. He restoreth. I love it how it says that he restoreth my soul. soul. Then it says these words. What time is it? I don't want to go down. Number five. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads us continually in a manner that is right. That is moral. Upstanding. Just. He directs our steps, our conscience, and our decisions. 
The shepherd will always lead his sheep in the way of righteousness and holiness. And because we are as sheep, because we are sheep, we cannot lead ourselves. In other words, you can't lead yourself into righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay? You can't lead yourself. The shepherd, he leadeth me in the path. He got me on the right path. I'm going, I'm in righteousness. He's and he's doing it. Watch this. He's doing it for his name. Can I tell you something? The reason why the Lord is going to save you is because he's doing it for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. God's name is at stake. And anytime God's name is at stake, he's not going to fail. I remember at times when, when God was going to allow Israel to be destroyed uh, because of Israel's disobedience. But Moses would plead with God. At one time in particular, Moses pleaded with God and said, God, don't do this. Uh, don't let the enemies destroy us because of your namesake. They're going to think they're not going to understand that you're the God that delivered us if you allowed us to be destroyed. So God, for your name. Can I tell you something? For God's namesake, he's going to save you. He's going to protect you. He's going to restore you. He's going to lead you in the paths of righteousness because his name is at stake. Okay, let me let me help y'all. Let me bring that closer to home. Uh, there's some things that you won't do because you got a good name. Mm -hmm. There's some things uh, uh, that you won't allow to happen because you've got a good The Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than riches. And there's some things you won't do because you don't want that to be labeled on your name. <laughs> uh, well, God has more at stake than you and I with our names. In fact, there's no comparison because compared to him, his name, watch this. What I love about his name, his name is heaven's legal name. So everything that goes by his name has to be verified in heaven or is verified in heaven. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. If you're doing wrong, God ain't leading you. Mm -hmm. Don't mess up. I, I, I can't tell you how many people that came in my office and told me God told them something. Oh, here's this pastor coming out. A great come out of me. The Lord done told me, pastor. And there's some members I just outreach them. The Lord ain't told you that. <laughs> And people, watch this, people don't like when you tell them something as a shepherd. But it's my responsibility to discern what you don't discern. Oh, how many times have I had people sitting in front of me in my desk telling me the Lord? <laughs> and the fruit of what the Lord told them never manifested. Mm, come on. So either you lied, because God, come no, on. ain't no if, you lied. Come on. Because God ain't going to lie. Come on, there you go. God told me, no, he didn't tell you that. Your flesh told you that. Mm -hmm. Somebody prophesied it to me. I don't care what people prophesy. People prophesy all the time. Come on. Y'all ain't got quiet on me tonight. Come on. I don't care what people prophesy. Oh, I'm going to meddle tonight, but that's all right. That's what pastors do. That's what under shepherds do. Y'all, be careful of coming to me telling me what God told you. Because if, if what he told you, he ain't told me, something's wrong with that story. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Be careful of coming to me as your pastor telling me what God told you to do. If God ain't told me. Because it seems like to me as your oath. Come on. Come on. God would have told. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Especially when it deals with your. Amen, We've had people leave this church. Talking about I'm called a pastor. Opened up for a year and been gone down. Mm. From this church. Because they wouldn't sit still long enough. I'm here they mad not. They wouldn't still, sit still long enough to be taught something. Mm. You wasn't faithful here at this church. And you're going to start pastoring? <laughs> <laughs> One individual wasn't faithful, couldn't pay, wouldn't pay, receive tithes, making good money, talk crazy. 
got mad because I made Minister Gaddy my ministerial assistant, and that's what he was. Since he was an assistant pastor, in his mind, he's thinking I'm making Derek the assistant pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? When I started this church, Minister Gaddy, when we was at the hotel, Minister Gaddy was with me. And when it was time to put up the, all the stuff and all the stuff and load it in my car, that fella wasn't nowhere around, but Derek was always right by me putting up stuff. And you wonder why I made him miss it. Then you're going to go pastor. God ain't called you to pastor. Hmm. Pastor, you being kind of wrong tonight. That's all right. Some of us need to hear this. I'm sick of, as a pastor, I get sick of foolish. Some people tell me the Lord said. Amen. And the Lord ain't said nothing. You just in your flesh, your dust done stirred up. <laughs> and here's the problem. Here's the problem when your dust stirs up, but then when it settles and you see God didn't say that, you ought to humble yourself enough to say, I was wrong. Amen. The problem is there's a difference between sheep and goats. Oh, getting quiet in here tonight. If, can I tell you something about what God does? If God says something, it's going to come to pass. There you go. When he said it's going to come to pass. There you go. I remember when I started you to life. I'm going to close. Remember when I started you to life. And it seemed like the enemy was mad, boy. And I didn't start you to life because I wanted to start you to life. In fact, I was against starting another church. I was told, when I say I was totally against, I told God, and I told you, I shared this before, I told God, Mr. Kylie, I ain't starting another church. I ain't going through that again. What I went through in Atlanta, all my money, throwing all my money in the ministry, and people don't care nothing. Pleading with people to present the tithe offering. I'm throwing my money, making sure the ministry is going. I said, God, I ain't starting another church. <laughs> but how many know he's the shepherd? Mm -hmm. And he knows better than the sheep. I remember I started this. I started the church. And one of the things the Lord shared with me, he said, when he told me he's with me, and he said, he said, you will see the difference in this call than from when you went to Atlanta. And then he said these words, you will not have the same struggles you had in Atlanta with the church of Atlanta. Do you know God has been faithful every step of the way to me? God has been faithful to Judah life because I was I dared enough to trust God again and do what he told me to do. And when he watches, when God tells you something, it's going to come to pass. My sheep hear me and they know my voice and another they will not follow Watch this. He leadeth me in the see. He's got to take us on a path because if he doesn't, we're going to stray down the wrong path. Right. Think about this. Out of all the paths, I'm gonna stop here tonight. Out of all the paths we could take, he's the only one leading us in the right path. Right. The paths of righteousness for him. Now, if you stray off of here, it is. Here's the danger. If you stray off the path of righteousness, then you you leave yourself open. For wilderness wolves, uh, uh, wild dogs, you lead yourself to falling off a cliff, going down a ravine as a sheep. That's why a sheep must continue to be led. A sheep has to be led. Led in the path. Now, I love this in the path of righteousness. Notice uh, the Bible says our righteousness is as what? Filthy right. So it's not, we can't follow our own righteousness. Because our path will lead us wrong. Remember I talked about the sheep scattering. when uh, They may or may not go in the right direction when they leave the shepherd. Well, most of the time they're going to go in the wrong direction. So he has to lead us in the paths of righteousness. Why? For his name sake. His name is at stake, y'all. The Lord's name is at stake. Uh, I've got some more and I don't want to. It's, it's right at 8 o'clock, so I don't want to. I'm going to stop here. Uh, We'll pick up with the rest of that uh, of Psalms 23 uh, next week, Lord willing. Amen? Amen? More than likely, unless the Lord adds some more, or there is some more, but I think I should be able to get through next week. Uh, 
Lord willing, we will be able to end next week uh, and possibly have a little test. <laughs> so, those of you that I asked tonight, are you ready for a test? You said no. I know I heard it from over here. If you said no, make sure you study these lessons. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Any questions about sheep? Any questions about the shepherd so far? Any questions? Before you close, we want to thank God for those that tuned in tonight. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, we want you to know that God loves you. He cares for you. And he's the only one that can help you wherever you are in your life, no matter your circumstances. If you can be at your lowest, you can, you can be in the valley right now. And you, can, you can be in one of the most tumultuous storms in your life. The Lord is your shepherd, and he wants to help your life. He wants to strengthen your life. He wants to revive, restore you, lead you, and guide you. He wants to protect you. If you have questions about salvation, you can go to our website at www.judahlife.com. We'll be glad to answer you when we have a prayer request. We love you. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast tonight. Judah Life, give them a hand for those that are streaming tonight.